in a year's time will be low or not, that I don't know. In the rebound, the garbage bounces back the strongest because it's the one that has fallen the most. And as I said, in the case of Citigroup, say, the stock went down from 57 to 1. It can go to 5 before it goes to 0. I'm not saying it will go to 0, but I'm saying that the rebound potential is quite high for some of these banks and financial institutions, and some financial institutions will stay in business. And what about the risk, though? I mean, what's unsaid there, or what actually it is said here, is that the, the, the rebound is there, the potential is there, but the risk is also there. Is that not true? Yeah, but of course there's always a risk. Uh, where you have the highest uh, upside potential, the risk is the highest. That's for sure. But I think if I look at the bailout packages in America, the government, they want to leave the banks intact. And actually they don't even change much in management. They take the bad assets out. So the banks are left one day with some business that at least has some value. And so that business has probably some upside potential, provided the government takes all the garbage out. But Mr. Geithner, Larry Summers, and Ben Bernanke, they're willing to do that and essentially saddle the taxpayer with the losses. Trish, you, you have a question you want to jump in with? Yeah, hi, Arnie. Yes, um, Mark, um, Mr. Faber, um, just wondering, what are your take on the major currencies? Or which are the ones that you actually see have any potential? Are you with the clamps that, that say that, you know, the dollar and the yen's um, safe haven days are over? Well, basically, I was uh, positive about the U.S. dollar for the last 15 months or so, and uh, the dollar having appreciated quite a lot against the uh, euro, I think now is about where it should be, and I would rather look at the U.S. dollar to weaken somewhat. I mean, I personally, I advise everybody to diversify out of dollars slowly into Canadian dollars, Australian dollars, and, of course, the Singapore dollar. This is a very strong country here, financially very solid, and so I still like the Singapore dollars. And also, I would say gold has now eased from $1,000 to less than 900 I think we may still go down to around 750 800 I'm not predicting that it will happen, but it's a possibility. And if it happens, then I would increase my gold positions. Right. What about the commodity currencies? You said that you do like um, uh, the, the, the Canadian dollar as well. You would think the same about the, the Kiwi dollar, uh, aside from the Australian dollar? Well, in general, all I can say is the G20 have basically agreed to implement policies that will lead to a loss of purchasing power of paper money. The question is, Loss of purchasing power against what? Now you can't print commodities. You can't print agricultural production and oil production and precious metals. So relative to paper money, commodities should actually go up in the longer run. And I think the commodities bull market came to an end in the July 2008. We collapsed on the CRB and now we bottomed out and uh, a few years from now, commodity prices should be much higher than they are now. All right, Dr. Faber, I just want to come back to your latest report, the gloom, boom, and doom report. I have to say, <clears throat> it really is all gloom and doom, not much boom there. In particular, you, you describe the U.S. as a great empire, and you're actually talking in, in no uncertain terms about this empire, uh, empire's demise, if you like, because of a series of mistakes. Uh, uh, mainly because of a lack of clarity in terms of what the current administration, Obama administration, has been doing and uh, what they've been doing in terms of intervening in the market. Take us through, you know, the, the scenario here. And what Basically, it what the administration is doing today is to blame the free market for having failed, when, in fact, it was government intervention, starting with Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, uh, the changes of Glass-Steagall and uh, changes in the capital rules and so forth. And Mr. Tim Geithner, who was essentially the head of the New York Fed, he failed to supervise the enormous leverage that was built up. So it's regulation that brought the problems about, and now more regulations is supposed to 
essentially solve the problems. But, but to, the, to a degree, it has fixed a little bit of the problem in the short term. I mean, uh, what's the <laughs> prognosis then you know, yes. for the longer term? Look, if you're an alcoholic and I give you a few more drinks, you also feel better for a little while. <laughs> the question is whether you have treated your symptoms or whether I have healed your problem. And I think really that the government's intervention in the world will prolong uh, the essentially period until the global economy will come out of this recession. And I think before we come out of this the, the recession, we will have war and conflicts. Ooh, hold up. You know, Japanese stocks, uh, you said the last time that we uh, talked here in Hong Kong that they were pretty interesting, good valuations, and Japanese banks uh, look to be a, a good buy as well. Do you still think that way? Yes, I mean, on a relative basis, I think that Japanese equities are uh, quite interesting. I mean, if you buy equities today, you have to assume that we don't go into a world's depression that will last for the next 10 years. You have to assume that sometimes within the next 5 or 10 years, there is a global economic expansion. And if you buy equities, you have to play for that expansion. And so you should be essentially in commodity-related stocks and in relatively cyclical stocks that will benefit from an expansion. And obviously the Asian exporting countries will benefit the most from an expansion when it happens. Okay. Let's quickly talk about gold prices as everyone wants to hear your thoughts uh, on gold. So uh, one viewer, Josephine Yap, uh, wants to ask, is a 875 US dollars a good level to buy into gold at this point? If not, what is a good level? Well, I think for people, it's a good time to always buy some gold. But you have volatility, like in every other commodity markets, and gold, don't forget, has been essentially the best performing asset in 2008. And as the financial markets this year kind of recover, uh, and as industrial commodities recover, gold is relatively unattractive. So. I think it's going to be dead money for the next three to six months, but I would buy every month some gold and not worry so much about the price. The weight stays the same. Okay, well, let's uh, stay with this uh, commodities theme then, Mark, because uh, another viewer, Tung Ling Yu, here in Hong Kong, uh, wants to ask about oil prices at around $50 a barrel. Now, do you see oil prices maybe edging up from here? And what is the risk of uh, oil prices heading down to 40 bucks a barrel? Yeah, I mean, I'm not a short-term trader, and maybe oil goes down back to $35, and maybe it goes first to $70. I just don't know these things on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, you just have to trade yourself, the markets. But in general, I think in a few years' time, commodity prices, including oil, will be higher than they are today. And what about this expected round of inflation? Because one viewer, uh, Stephen Mies, uh, says, uh, Dr. Faber, is it possible that expected inflation may fail to materialize with the credit continuing to contract faster than central banks are printing money? Yes, I think it's a very good question. But the point I'm making is this. The longer we don't have an economic recovery in the world, the more the governments will print money. And so the fiscal deficits will go up uh, because essentially the central banks will buy the government bonds that the Treasury departments are issuing. And one day when inflation comes back and say the Federal Reserve should increase interest rates, they will be reluctant to do so as they were between 2003 and 2006. And so at that time, the likelihood for inflation to actually exceed expectations is very high. And I think the best trade in the long run is basically to be short U.S. government bonds. But it's not easy for a retail investor to implement mm -hmm. that strategy. Okay, Dr. Faber, always a pleasure. Thank you so much for your time today.